What's up guys, and of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with yours truly, the Scarender. And well, today we got ourselves a match against Bluesy, a Scottish player, a very, very fine and good one at that. And uh, we battled a few times before, and I think I won once against him, and he has, as of right now, two wins against me. So it's my time to even the odds and uh, make it a 2-2 if I have the honest chance to. And uh, he won a mixed battle, and uh, like I said before, I'm not uncomfortable with it, but I really have no real team to, at the get-go to really set up, and the previous team I had in a mix is, um, while it still is very potent with Team Falf and all, it still, you know, oh, lacks originality right now from at least my side. So, I decided to just screw things together and see if it works. So, by the way, let's just check out his team, right? It's got the Omastar, Florgius, Glalie, Infernape, Crobat, and Registeel. So, Registeel seems like the obvious lead, and that is what I'm gonna go with, actually. And uh, I myself is using a Scarf, Togekiss, Regigigas, uh, Dragology, Steelix, Chestnut, and Pinsir. And I'm just gonna say right off the bat, the Pinsir I'm bringing is the wrong Pinsir. It was actually the Pinsir I used for breeding, and um, yeah, he didn't have the quick attack. And uh, basically by that, I decided to... Um, I had to fodder it off later on in the game, but you're gonna see a very, very strange situation. Had I had the right moves, I would not have fodder it off, but I just once I realized that, it was just, alright, <laughs> God damn it. So, I obviously didn't really, really prepare myself for uh, Blue because Blue is a really good trainer, and I think me, you know, really, really relaxing there and just threw something together really, really dented me. Uh, I definitely needed to be the better prediction if you're gonna have an honest chance of winning him, so that was uh, definitely what I was going with. So, with that in mind, let's go. So, like I said here, I did predict the Steelix. I'm gonna start off with Togekiss. I'm very sure that he won't go for an Iron Head or anything like that. So, I decided to just do some damage, see if it is especially defensive or defensive. It is genuinely bulky poke, so god knows, it could be both for all I care. Aura Sphere won't do as much actually, so it really feels like, alright, this should be especially defensive, even though we have 115 base. So I decide now to, you know, I'm he's gonna go for Iron Head, he's gonna go for super effective damage, and uh, I'm just gonna go straight out the bat for my Steelix, and uh, pretty much wall that out rather efficiently. And uh, really at this point, there is nothing Steelix can do more than uh, what this Ready Steel can do, and I decided to go for an Iron Head, predicting him to switch out, because to be honest, that must have been his best bet. But I decided to go for an Hammer Arm, and that is really fine, it doesn't do any real damage on me. But at the same time, I am... Um, this Iron Head won't do that much either, but after a Hammer Arm, I am actually able to outspeed, and I decided to play safe now. I really didn't wanna predict myself going for an, an earthquake because of um, he still had a crowbat inbound which definitely could have dealt with that so I was forced to go for life or damage there with the EQ and now the Inferno is coming in and I decided here that it seems very likely that he wants the momentum rather than try to finish me off and um, I went for the EQ in case he decided to go for Flare Blitz or a close combat uh, it's not very likely I would have survived it but at least I tried to so anyway, Crawbat is here, I went, like I said, for EQ, and it's not going to affect him. And there is really nothing he can do to me, so I decided to go for EQ anyway, because... Like I said, let's face it, there is really nothing a Crawbat can do to a Steelix. So Steelix is definitely, like, walling throughout this battle, very good at the get-go, and he's created the Som Oma Star. And uh, it's not sashed or anything, but I am failing, sadly, to uh, <laughs> kill it with just a slither of health. That, is, that must be 1 HP. So nevertheless, I decide to stay in, you know, whatever comes my way is going to take me out anyway, and Steelix definitely proven his point, and it's gonna go down, and, um, basically here, I just brought the Undertaker, and I actually thought it was Moxie, so, yeah, god damn it, so I was really frustrated about this, because obviously Pinsir would have been a nice addition to actually dealing with, um, Infernape here, which it is able to outspeed with the quick attack, but obviously it isn't, and I'm gonna side the part is off, because I have Exisor, Earthquake, and Sword Stance on this, that is everything. So, yeah, it 
it was terrible. It really was. And um, I, like I said, I had to fall it off because it can't do anything. And uh, it really, really sucks. It really does. So anyway here, I'm going to bring the Togekiss here because it is scarfed. I was very sure I was going to be able to have speed. And uh, yeah, I don't. I actually lack six um, stats or six points in speed to actually be able to, uh, to uh, outspeed it. And it's going to be somewhat crucial here because this Brave Bird is able to take the Togekiss out. And that's really fine. But definitely a huge misplay on my part to not really check that out. I was very sure I was going to be able to outspeed and that weren't the case. And Togekiss might be the only like real respond to my um, or to his Infernape. So anyway, I'm gonna go for Protect, getting as much HP as possible to be honest, because I'm basically not sure I can take another on a Brave Bird from this poke. And uh, I'm actually able to even without the Protect, because I do will I will survive with 14 HP. Without the Protect, I would have 4 HP left if that were the case. So, I mean, it's not the safest move I've ever done, but at the same time, had I not been able to pull this off, then I would have lost right here and then. It, it is that simple, because my I have a Chestnut on my team, which obviously is not going to work either against the Glalie, nor the Flordius, or, and I can't really stress this enough, the Infernape, my... <laughs> my... Dear God, really, Chestnut is definitely like, it's not made for this battle whatsoever, he's just in the bag waiting to die. So I go for Protect here, hoping for him to go for Explosion. There is no reason for him not to more than Showcase, I, I guess I would go for Explosion, just because, you know, for the lols, but he's definitely like, do the right place here and uh, decides to take me out, and um, yeah, I won't outspeed anything with my Dragaldi anyway, so it might as well just go down. And my only, like, real Pokemon I have now that's gone, you know, hopefully come through, is Regigigas. And uh, this is a set that is in combination with what Flaming Axe was doing way back, and also a combination that I want to try out on my own, that is, it is not as bulky, and only utilized Thunder Wave, and um, sadly, he got crit here, which really, really brought me down, and I was definitely forced here to go for Dream Punch. He decided to go for an Ice Shot, you know, trying to do the, like, the last second output of trying to take me out. Of course, without, um, uh, without the ability that boosts the ice moves, it will not really fail to take me out. And this drain punch does more than 50%. And uh, yeah, I get a pretty nice chunk of HP back, which I really, really needed. I still can't take a secret power from that range, which kind of... I maybe can, it's not entirely sure. But he will not decide to sack this poke off, because he's forced to go for an ice shot, and I will be able to speed and take brain punch, of course. Let's go to the Delacour, and you know, this is the right move, it really is. I can't do too much against the Flordius, I'm not even with the slow start able to outspeed, so I'm actually forced yet again to go for its Thunder Wave and just dent it in any fashion that is possible, and then hope for it being fully paralyzed. So, yeah, at this point I was definitely stressed out, like there were no real way for me of really getting in there. And the Moonblast, of course, will do significant amount of damage, and um, it really, really sucks, it really does, and... Um, it does roughly, what was that, I think 55-ish in HP, so I'm actually forced here to go for Dream Punch instead of trying to dent it, because it might as well with another Moonblast be able to take me out, even with Paralyzation. I was definitely hoping for a Paralyzation, of course. So, Dream Punch, you know, I do score a crit here, so I get 15 HP back instead of 10 like I did previously, and um, it might have matter. It might have matter in this point, because this Moonblast will be... Close, but not close enough. And Ready Gigas, you know, he will find the strength, he will get his act together and retaliate and with a return. And um, yeah, that will just shatter the foundation of Earth, really, and will hurt so much and so badly that this Flodius is just not able to cope with that. Like you see, the exploding is coming and Flodius is going down. And that was basically, it was so worth uploading this for that, <laughs> that situation only, uh, to be honest. So even with the slow start, you know, I am not able to outspeed an Infernape. My speed is in 300, I think 315, so that falls short on about 20's base speed on um, on Infernape, and it's able to take me out, and even if it weren't, or even if I would be able to outspeed, there is not, I'm not that sure I would be able to cope with the Glalie. Uh, but it was definitely, you know, Chestnut's gun come in here and just die. I mean, this is what it was made for, really. 
<laughs> I won't lie about that. Uh, but like I said, it was definitely like a fun game, and uh, my Ready Gigas might have been able to come through if I invested more speed in it, but I decided to have a more defensive build on it, and I never really expected it to really survive long enough to get its act together and, like I said, shatter the foundation of the Earth and actually eradicate the Florius. So, to be honest, it was actually a much closer game than it really looks like, because I really thought I lost the situation I lost Togekiss, and the reason I thought about that was because I had no real response to Infernape, and uh, basically it was no issue for him to actually finish the game with just Infernape, that is. So yeah, I really hope you guys, of course, enjoyed that battle. It was definitely fun seeing Reggie Gigas. I mean, I can't really stress it enough, that is definitely a Pokemon that has... It has obvious issues, that is that it really isn't working. Uh, it has, even though it is one of those legendaries with one of the highest base stats of all, it still has the issue of the slow start, which definitely hinder it from working properly. It is strong enough though, so once it gets its so-called act together, it really like it really kills things. But you need to find a way to make it survive long enough to pull that off, and uh, it's hard. It's definitely tough. I'm gonna try different strategies to see if I can get this thing to work, but I won't promise you guys anything. Um, so yeah, and also Blue Sea, thank you for that battle. Of course, you played great. You really did, and um, yeah. Damn, I shouldn't have risked the Scarf Togekiss, I really feel that now. After watching this battle again, I do realize that since I was Scarfed, I was able to outspeed Infernape, so I can just finish that game off with an Air Slash and actually throw Dragali instead, which have probably made me win. Um, I won't say it would, <laughs> it would make me win, but you know, it would definitely be a closer battle. It would be a battle against the Glalie, against the Togekiss, and I wonder who won that one, since Glalie was paralyzed and all. But hey, that that's my issue, and that was my problem to not playing that. I really, really thought that I was able to outspeed, and I think my arrogance there really got the best of me. And Blue C won fairly. He really played great, and you know had the things going for him. And um, I basically just did the best of my abilities to actually eradicate him, and uh, I felt short as sadly. So it's a free one in his favor right now, and that really sucks. I need to definitely catch up here, and you know I need to bring a real mix tier. So I'm definitely right now trying to define a new mix tier that I can bring in the future. So stay tuned for that. Definitely you, Lucy. I'm looking at you. <laughs> Not really, like I said, GG. And also, guys, um, quick update. If you stayed this long, then you know, thanks, man. But. Um, I'm first going to start my search lock on my Twitch channel, so I'm going to um, do a little small update before I'm doing that, but hopefully you guys will be able to join. If you got school or other things doing, that's fine. I'm going to upload everything on YouTube, and uh, we'll see if I do uh, some best of variant. We'll see. But uh, anyway, guys, I want to thank you as always for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, and if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. And remember, the sky is the limit, so have a good day, guys, and take care, alright? Bye.